Hi, I'm standing underneath a P2, and that's what we call um, the chassis starting in 2001 to 2007. The S80 models starting in 1999 used the P2 chassis. Other models followed in 2001, and that included the S60, the V70, the XC70, and even the XC90. And what we're going to do today is just run underneath this car and just show you a quick overview of what you might want to see underneath your car for some of those who might not be so familiar with some of the terminology or where things are located under your vehicle when having to do maintenance or upgrades. Just for field of reference, I'm standing behind the passenger rear wheel right now and we're going to take a look underneath the suspension. Now again, we're looking at a 2001 V70 front wheel drive. The only difference between the front wheel drive and all wheel drive is simply going to be that the front wheel drive is missing a drive shaft that comes back to a rear diff that supplies power to the rear wheels when they're slipping going on. So just so everybody knows, these pieces that we're going to point out today are going to reference all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive. Things might look a little bit different, but the general concept is going to be the same. Looking at the rear suspension, and since we're covering maintenance items, there's really not a lot of failures that we see for these cars. Now we've seen a lot of P2 chassis that have hundreds of thousands of miles on them, but in the rear end, nothing really fails um, that would cause you to have to replace any items unless there's been some form of damage. The P2 chassis utilize a four-link rear suspension setup. Essentially, it's a glorified name for rear control arms. There's a few adjustment factors back here for alignment, but it's got four separate links. And the reason why Volvo did that was that it can maintain the proper alignment all the way through any type of suspension travel. And that really helps with the wear and tear in your tires. Since we're on the topic of maintenance, one of the items that could possibly fail on the back of these vehicles is a rear wheel bearing. So the rear wheel bearings used on P2 aren't generally like older cars where you can replace a race or individual bearings. You actually have to buy these in a full hub assembly. Now that might sound a little scary, the investment's a little bit more upfront, but the labor is actually a little bit easier to replace. The wheel bearing comes as a full hub assembly and can be replaced for both sides. Moving along with the topic of rear suspension, there's a few things I'd like to point out to you, just so you can get a general idea of where things are located. As you can see, this is the rear sway bar, and it routes up and over the rear trailing arm and up over the chassis. We've got a rear end link located right here that attaches to the sway bar. Here's where your rear spring is located, and that sits in a perch on the rear trailing arm. And then you've got your rear shock. This is the bottom shock mount. To access the top shock mount, you've got to go inside the trunk assembly or into the rear cargo area if it's a wagon. Rear end links can be a failure item and they'll cause like a light metallic clicking sound going over bumps or with some oscillation in the road. We'll go over that in another video, but definitely these are all replaceable items. The rear shock, as you can see, this car has got a Bill Stein heavy duty on it. We've got an assortment of different rear shocks that can go on the car if you feel the suspension's getting a little squishy or if the rear spring's not uh, hanging up to your liking or if you got some rear end sag with a non-Nevo mat shock, you're, you can actually replace the rear springs. Now, talking about Nevo mats, if you're looking to replace the spring or the rear shocks in your vehicle, you will have to inspect any P2 because those cars did come equipped with a rear Nevo mat. And by rear Nevo mat, that's a term that you hear us use quite a bit. That's a self-leveling shock that Volvo used, which maintained the ride height of the car. It did come with a helper spring, but the Nevo mat is what maintained the ride height. Not like an older vehicle or older Volvos that were used where they utilized a spring to maintain the rear ride height. Okay, now wrapping up on the rear suspension. As you can see, there's not a lot of maintenance items that really need to be worried about back here in the rear end. Again, your wheel bearings might be one of them, or end links, or something along those lines. Mainly, it's just accessories in the back. Um, these literally are just the rear wagon wheels keeping the car moving. We're going to move to the front and show you some of the more maintenance items that need to be addressed or possibly looked at if you're looking at diving into a P2 or if you own one and you haven't done any maintenance. If you're looking at purchasing a P2 or if you're a current P2 owner, and it's curious about how to maintain or possibly renew some of that new car feel, we're going to go over some of the more common wear items that you would normally find on the front end of one of these vehicles. Here at IPD, we get a lot of calls pertaining to front end clunks and bumps and noises. Um, just a few things to point out. You can have an independent inspect your front end, um, but we're going to go over the front strut really quick and give you a few helpful tips of some things that could possibly be wrong within the front suspension. Volvo P2 utilizes a front McPherson strut assembly. That incorporates at the top a spring seat, an actual bearing, and then you've got the spring and then the strut assembly. This all stacks together and bolts to the front of the spindle. Now you'll notice that when the spring seat fails or if a bearing fails up top, 
you're more likely going to get a clunk or a bump or some sort of chassis noise when you go over any type of speed bump. You move the car side to side. And usually what kind of clunk you're going to get associated with that is a quick clunk because it settles. And then once you move the suspension to another direction, it'll clunk again. We get a lot of people that try and give us uh, the clunking sounds over the phone. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't. But we definitely recommend if you hear something loose in the front end to go get it looked at by an independent Volvo specialist. Now here we are looking underneath the, the front strut assembly. Here is a CV boot. This is connected to the drive shaft axle or front axle. These cars use axles to drive these vehicles. There's one on both sides. All wheel drives, you find them in the rear as well, but this being a front wheel drive car, this has an axle here. These are a wear item. Normally when an axle fails, you'll get a pinging or a metallic ticking sound. You'll notice it more when doing tight radiuses or tighter corners, but definitely have that inspected if you think that you've got a, a worn CV joint or a front axle assembly. Another thing that happens is that this boot tears. These are grease filled, a lot of dirt and corrosion, road grime gets in there and can blow these things out prematurely. Below the CV joint or front axle or drive shaft assembly, you've got the front control arm. Like earlier models, the control arm incorporated a ball joint, but on this particular model for P2, the ball joints are serviceable. This is a separate piece from the front control arm. The front control arms usually fail because of bushings that crack. These bushings are under a lot of load. They isolate the subframe from the rest of the chassis and you get a lot of resonance, a lot of movement here, especially when braking or cornering, and these bushings do fail. This is a very common item on these vehicles that do go bad, so definitely have them inspected if you wanna get back to that new car feel or if you feel that the car's handling different than what it was when you first purchased it. If you notice or hear any type of wheel rubbing when doing tight radiuses or turning, more likely your steering stop is a little bit worn down. Here's where your steering stop is located. It's on the front of the front control arm. This is a serviceable item, and there are different thicknesses, um, all located on our website. You can look at the different thicknesses, and the reason why there's different thicknesses is that they pertain to different models with different tire and wheel variations, which contribute to the turning radius. Last but not least on the front end of these vehicles, so we've got our end links. So if you're hearing any form of sound or high metallic noise while you're going over bumps, speed bumps, anything like that, more likely the end link has failed. The end link connects to the sway bar, and then goes straight up and attaches to the back side of the strut. These actually endure quite a bit of load, a lot of different movement and flexibility in them. That's why IPD makes an HD version, which we'll be covering later in a different tech tip, but that's where your end link's located, just if you're curious. It's got two mounting bolts, again, one to the sway bar and one to the back of the strut. Since we're on the same topic, this is where the sway bar is located. It runs up and over and follows along the back side of the subframe and attaches to the end link on the other side. These have been upgraded, but definitely if this is something that wants to be serviceable or looked at, the sway bar's got bushings that incorporated that hold it on the back of the subframe. You cannot replace bushings on a Volvo that are on a factory sway bar. Those have been vulcanized to the steel and they are not removable or replaceable. The IPD sway bars do come with new bushings and are a serviceable item. Okay. And finally, looking at the front end, just like the back end, these things do have wheel bearings that do fail. Unfortunately, it's not a serviceable item that you can replace races or individual bearings. It's a complete hub assembly. Now, I know that sounds a little daunting, but it's actually pretty simple to replace. Any tech or independent service mechanic should be able to replace one in about an hour and a half. The investment's a little bit more. Um, they range between $100 to $200 for the whole hub assembly, but that is an item that does fail. If you get any sort of resonance or humming while you're loading the vehicle onto that particular side of the car, I would definitely have your car inspected because you could have possibly a front hub or wheel bearing assembly going bad. We appreciate you watching. And again, this is a brief overview of the suspension on a P2 model. Now, everything that we've talked about today can be replaced with items here at IPD. Now, if you're a confident do-it-yourself mechanic, you can definitely perform all these jobs on the garage floor um, in your home. If you're a little uh, weary of doing something like this yourself, definitely consult with a local independent. We don't want anybody diving into any of these types of jobs or getting hurt, especially if you've never done it before. We also support all these items with the proper tools to remove and replace all the things that we covered within this video. I appreciate you hanging in there, and hopefully this gives you some insight to getting your car back to rolling the way that it should when it was brand new.